talk about the conventions. Like the Olympics, they come around every four years uh, just to create uh, traffic jams in their host cities. Now, over the next two weeks, we'll be coming to you from Cleveland and then Philadelphia. But before we take off, Desi Lydic is here to, to tell us more about this great American tradition. Thanks, Trevor. Earlier this year, millions of Americans went to the polls, gave their name to a lonely old widow, and cast a vote in their state's presidential primary. Well, those voters weren't actually voting for candidates. They were picking delegates for the party's quadrennial conventions, where they'll spend four days in a redecorated basketball arena to officially select their presidential nominee. Right after they select something stupid to put on their head. I mean, really, really stupid. They also create the party's platform, which spells out its core beliefs. It's kind of like their Ten Commandments. No trans people in bathrooms! But more than all that, a modern convention's real purpose is giving each party a week-long primetime infomercial. Mostly that means politicians giving speeches. Four straight nights of why their party is the only one that can save America from whichever version of hell the other party would cause. Sometimes, a convention speech can even jumpstart a political career. There is not a liberal America and a conservative America. There is the United States of America. <laughs> oh, you sweet, naive man. It all leads to the maybe next president triumphantly accepting their party's nomination. And sometimes a tongue down their wife's throat while we all try not to puke. And after the big speech, balloons! Yay, balloons! Who doesn't love balloons? Ah, oh, God damn it! I told you, no real balloons! Shit. The very first presidential convention was held in 1831 by the Anti-Masonic Party. And for most of the next century, the conventions were where party big shots got together and picked a nominee without necessarily asking for anyone else's input. And nobody knew going in who the nominee was going to be. Although chances are they were going to look like the headmaster at a school for troubled young men. And with no TV schedule to adhere to, nobody knew how long the conventions would last. In 1924, it took the Democrats 16 days to settle on their nominee. And that was during Prohibition, so they couldn't even drink. I mean, how do you even do your job without drinking? But in 1968, the convention chaos got a little too chaotic when Democratic insiders nominated Hubert Humphrey, who hadn't won a single primary and supported the Vietnam War. And that made anti-war Democrats unhappy, which was apparently a good enough reason to start beating the shit out of them. After that, both parties moved to expand the primary so they could settle on a nominee ahead of time. So by the 1990s, the most chaotic convention moments looked like this. Now, of course, back then, they had no idea that the Macarena caused lung cancer. <laughs> better times, better times. Trevor? Thank you, Desi. Uh, so, we're all going to the conventions. You must be super excited. Oh, yeah, yeah, I sure am. In fact, I even got myself a festive convention hat with an elephant and a donkey giving each other a special hug. <laughs> Desi, uh... Yeah. I think those animals on your hats are 69ing. Yeah, well, whatever you want to call it. I like to call it the ultimate act of bipartisanship. Hey there, thanks for subscribing to our new YouTube channel. Uh, you're probably thinking, but I didn't. I know, which is fine, but now you're thinking about subscribing. You should really just subscribe. Just do it. Subscribe. Who said that? Subscribe. Who's saying these things? Subscribe now. What?